What's up? I'm Brendan Yuri from Panic at the Disco, and you're watching our most requested live Ask Anything chat. Uh, the new song is called High Hopes, and a huge thank you to Romeo and iHeartRadio for letting us be on the show tonight. I love you guys. Um, okay, first question from Linda from Madison. She asks, what does the line, the plank and the passion mean in the song Old Fashioned? Very cool question. The plank and the passion. So basically, praising and romanticizing your childhood, your memories, um, throwing up a toast for all the times that maybe you were embarrassed for doing something trendy, the plank, or something like this. Um, it's also a term, you know, walking the plank, when you feel that maybe a little self-punishment is due. Um, in those times, I feel that it's better to celebrate with friends rather than sulk in your sadness. So really just keeping the passion alive. Thanks, Linda. Here goes my dogs. This one's from Samantha from Auckland. Hey. Hello, yeah? If you could say only one thing to every one of your fans, what would it be? I mean, all you need is love, really, so I would say I love you. Thank you. I love you very much. Thanks, Samantha. This is from uh, Thomas from Los Angeles. Have you ever been insecure about your voice? Of course. I'm still insecure about my voice a lot of times. You know, it's not necessarily... Uh, an easy thing to perform, and to me, the voice is the hardest instrument to um, keep in good shape, basically. So over the years, I've taught myself and uh, had other people teach me certain tricks, you know. I did Broadway for a time, for three, four months, and I had this amazing teacher, Katie Agresta, shout out to Katie, and she taught me this thing where, you know, pulling out your tongue out of your mouth and basically stretching it out because your tongue is so powerful, that it'll block your vocal cords getting in the air and rubbing the correct way in like your mid-range, the soft palate as they say. So yeah, there's a bunch of different things that keep me more secure about my instrument, my voice. Uh, but yeah, all the time, like, you know, I just hung out with some friends and we were talking music and we were singing and my voice cracked and like, that happens all the time, you know? And I wish it didn't, but at the same time, it's kind of cool when that happens. Like my favorite albums are ones where you hear them either mess up on purpose or it's like a mistake that happened and they kept it, you know? It's like a really cool kind of emotional thing that happens there. It's like a different connection to the song entirely. Thank you for that, Thomas from LA. Um, okay, Amy from London, England asks, what are your three main tour essentials? I'll see you in March. I will see you in March, darling. Um, well, Amy, my three main tour essentials. Uh, I have to say beer. Beer is my uh, comfort food. <laughs> if that makes any sense, if you can qualify it as a food. There's enough calories, right? You can call, call it food. Um, so yeah, we gotta have beer, good beer. Um, I have to have my laptop with me now on tour because it's become a necessity. Um, I know that, you know, the capability is becoming exponentially larger over the past, like even four years, five years, where you can make an album on your phone, which is really cool. So you don't need a lot of stuff, luckily, but I work better when I have my, my laptop and my little workspace and my little, you know, portable recording studio. So those are two things, my laptop and some beer. Um, what's a third tour essential? Uh, Oh geez, days off, I guess, can that count? We can call it days off. Um, yeah, it's really essential to, to me to be able to rest, you know, when you're doing like a two hour set and you have three shows in a row, it's really taxing, especially since I've um, been just getting older, honestly. And so as that goes on, like days off, we really appreciate it. And as a crew, as a band, as like our whole panic camp, we tour really well because we get along with each other. And so days off for us are ways of kind of reinvigorating our, our friendships where, you know, most of the time it's just business. Like, hey, how you doing? Hey, can you fix this, please? Hey, can we work something out? And then, you know, we go to a bar, we play some pool, uh, play some shuffleboard or something, darts, whatnot. And yeah, that's a very good relaxing thing. So beer, laptop, days off. Thanks, Amy. I'll see you in March. John from the Philippines asks, how's the first part of the tour going? I hope you take good care of yourself and have a little break. Thank you, John. That's very sweet, very thoughtful. Uh, the first part of the tour is going amazingly. I am always so nervous when the planning is happening and it's usually any, anywhere from like six to eight months before the tour starts. And you know, we're still thinking about ideas. Um, when I say we, it's, it's me, it's my manager friends, it's my friends that I have around me, tour managers, uh, road managers, all these people that I've known for over a decade that we work really well together. And it's because uh, we're not afraid to be brutally honest. So 
the first part of tour goes as well as we plan and sometimes better, you know, this time around it's just blown my expectations out of the water because I think we had over planned, which if that's a thing, I don't know, um, trying to figure out what makes us the happiest with the show. It doesn't matter whose idea it was, best idea wins every time. Um, that's usually a, a, a really healthy thing to have or else I'd probably be really bummed. But um, the other thing that makes tour just unstoppable and beautiful is you guys, you know, the fans. And I know that that's a cliche thing to say, but you have to understand that if you guys weren't, you know, supporting us and weren't supporting me and allowing me to perform for you, um, I would be much more sad. <laughs> and it would just be rehearsal and sound check, you know, because you wouldn't be there. So thank you guys for your support. I love you. Elena from Fresno. What up? You know, Nicole's from Fresno. Um, she's gonna hate that I said that. No, she won't. Elena from Fresno asks, were you able to keep the boots from your Broadway adventure? Yes, Elena, I was. And you know why? Because not everybody gets to keep their boots when they play a uh, part in Kinky Boots. But I did because I was the claim to fame, the smallest or shortest Charlie Price they had had ever in the history of the show. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy, but um, it did help me keep the boots. So I had to get custom boots made and um, on the last day I asked, I said, well, can I, can I take them home? They said, yeah, but I doubt anybody else will fit in them. So it was the last little burn, you know, <laughs> sick burn. Um, but I'm very glad I got to keep them because now I have a costume forever. And uh, I mean, they're just cool. They were made by a professional man who makes professional stuff and they're actually really comfy. If you guys have a, a chance to get something made, I highly recommend it. Thank you, Elena. Daphne from Memphis asks, just wanted to tell you that High Hopes played at my friend's church. Okay, not a question, but that's a very cool little piece of information. It played at your friend's church, that's really cool. Like that is super cool. Um, wow, we're breaking barriers now, you know? If it's played at like a concert, I could understand that, but like if it's played at a church? Dude, I'll never get away from church, I love it. <laughs> Seriously, that's like really flattering. Um, anytime I hear, you know, our song we played on the radio, it's like weird still. It's very mind blowing and like cool. You know, I still get like giddy. <laughs> it's just like, wait, what? Is that really me? That's pretty cool. A little surreal. So thank you for that, Daphne. Appreciate that from Memphis. Uh, Vanessa from Roseville asks, if you had to get a tattoo of one of your song lyrics, what lyrics would you choose? I've, I've probably given some joke answers about this. Um, I've gotten some, some uh, tattoos that are panic related. Uh, this is a gospel tattoo. Um, just basically burning a gospel. People are like, you're burning a Bible. No, it's, there's no word that says it's the Bible on here. It's the panic gospel because there's an exclamation point on it. Um, this is the panic symbol that looks like a Pinterest symbol. <laughs> I probably have to saw my piece of skin off there for the copyright. Uh, this is Death of a Bachelor that actually a fan designed and I'm so glad that they did because it's one of my favorite tattoos of all time. Um, so yeah, there's Death of a Bachelor. I mean, I, I'm still working on it. If I had to pick a lyric, maybe just high hopes. Like right now, I love that, but it'd even be cooler to get something like, hey, look, Ma, I made it, you know? Um, I think it'd be fun to put one of those on there. So high hopes or hey, look, Ma. Thanks, Vanessa from Roseville. Okay. Marika from NYC, am I saying that right? Marika, Marika, Marika. It's a very cool name. Um, you are about to get into a fight. What song comes on as your soundtrack? <laughs> okay, so there's two ways you can go about this, right? You can either go real cool and be like Rolling Stone Street Fight, or you can play like Pina Colada. <laughs> you know, Escape or whatever that song, the Escape song. If you've ever seen the movie Dirty Work with Norm MacDonald, Chris Farley, uh, Artie Lang, all these people, it's pretty funny, and they do that. You know, Chris Farley says like, G7, Rolling Stone, street fight. He's like, you hit G8, and then Pina Colada song comes on, and it's a pretty great fight scene for like 30 seconds. Um, thank you, Marika, Marika. Sorry I butchered your name. It's a very cool spelling now. Um, okay, that was it. Well, thanks again for watching our exclusive Ask Anything chat with me <laughs> and with Romeo, beautiful. Um, uh, it was most requested live, so you guys are very much a part of this, and I very much appreciate you. Again, the new song is called High Hopes, um, and then hopefully I'll see you guys on the road very soon. And if not, I'll see you online. I love you.